if you take a look at the service non-stockable product, it's very similar resemblance to item non-stockable product. So far, these are the differences and similarities. But there are other options yet to come. Let's go ahead, take a look at the purchase. You have a confirmation. If I switch back to the header, change this back to the journal, you lose all those transactions. And these are just the transactions, and you cannot confirm this document. You no longer have access to the transactions whatsoever. You can't even retrieve that. So as you see, it doesn't post anything. It creates something on the specific table. As soon as you literally do the physical update, when you do a receipt, when you do issue, then it posts it. Consider these inventory transactions as a suggestions, as an analogy, as a journal entry. But they're transactions. Without the journal header, it's per line. However, they are not being posted yet, unless you literally change the physical update. Now, if I switch back and change this to a purchase order, let's go ahead and confirm this purchase order. That's logically how it works. I create a PO, I confirm it, send it to the vendor, and after a couple of days or after a couple of weeks, perhaps, they go ahead and pick or perhaps reserve, pick, pack, ship it to me, and then I can literally do certain activities. As you see, once more, even though you confirm that it, it doesn't change anything on the status, it always stays ordered. So confirmation is just your confirmation that turns on the flag for you to be able to do a product receipt. If you don't confirm, you can't do a receipt. You have to do a confirmation. Now, if I carry on, let's take a look at other similarity and differences here. First of all, if you take a look at the setup, we talk about invoice matching and invoice policy later on, and we get into the detail of it. If you take a look at the products, and look at the delivery, look at the picking, price and discount. These are lots of demonstration and subject matter that comes in future demonstration of my course. But at the moment, you can see also the foreign trade that we talked about, the fixed asset we discussed within the financial. But I showed it to you within the vendor invoice, but you could just do it right here in the purchase order. Same story, same situation, default financial dimensions. And finally, if you're using transportation management, these are your loads. You can take advantage of it too. In other words, you have your own tracking or you manage someone else's third-party tracking system. Now, if I carry on and wrap up this conversation as my first demonstration, you can actually have multiple deliveries and all, which I'll talk about later. From the update line, I choose registration. And as you see, the registration window will appear. And now, here, the status will be shown once more as ordered. You can manually add a line or you can select on this checkbox and do an auto-create. It's completely up to you. As soon as you do this, Automatically, the site and warehouse will be picked up from the default settings of that specific product. And the status becomes registered. You can unregister by selecting that line again and post again. So if you made a mistake and you registered the wrong product, you can always undo it. So it's just a status. So if I register it, see what's going to happen. On the first item, when I do the registration, the transaction changes the status from ordered into the registered under the receipt column. What does it mean? Imagine this idea. A truck brings the goods from your supplier to your premises. Who signs for it first? Well, maybe the security guard, maybe the receptionist of the building. They sign for it. As soon as you sign for it, that's yours. It's literally physically available on your premises. But do you know where it is? Do you know on what location are you going to place it? You can't say it's receipt. That's one of the things I need to advise you about. Certain customers they use a different terminology. As soon as it comes to their premises, they call it a receipt. And as soon as they go about and place it away, they call it a register. It's all terminology. All you need to do, do the end user training properly and try to convince them that it does the same thing, it's just a different wording. Or if they really are picky and is very worthy about things, rename the label the way it matches their needs. That's all you need to do. But what I'm, my goal is, is to show you what AX terminology is all about and how does it work? So the first one was ordered, then it's registered. And then after that, logically, when you register, you sign for it. As a matter of fact, sometimes you can bypass the registration and directly go and do a product receipt. Sometimes you can't. You have to register it before you receive it. These are policies you can turn on, which I'm about to demonstrate. Look at the on hand. As soon as I do a registration, immediately the quantity has been incremented by one. 